That's super cool. And I have one more thing you, I want to talk to you about the book, Dr. Moreland, and it'll do a little bit of Q&A. Um, so if you have questions or comments related to like miracles or the supernatural or like NDEs, um, feel free to leave those in. But the last thing you talk about in your book is this idea of like near-death experiences. Yes. So can you talk a little bit about like what they are and how they play into like the story and the relevance of them when looking at like the idea of miracles? Well, yes. In, uh, in, uh, in studies in Germany and, and, and the United States, uh, uh, 14% of Americans have had near-death experiences. I mean, that's a pretty significant number. And across around the world, it's estimated through statistical research that there have been at least 300 million of these. So these are happening all over the place. And uh, they happen to little children who don't have any religious training. They happen to atheists uh, and and throughout the world, no matter what the culture is, there is a set of characteristics that they all have a, seem to have in common. Now, sometimes people will have an experience uh, that I take to be of Jesus Christ, but they don't know his name and they misinterpret the experience uh, and they interpret it in terms of the way they were raised. In the Old Testament, there were times when God appeared to people and did not tell them who he was or that he was God. So there's nothing mm -hmm. odd about this. And in fact, I in the book, I, ex I explain how these can't be explained naturalistically and uh, why they are consistent with the Bible. They are not contrary to the word of God. In fact, 80 to, 80 to 90 percent of these are fully consistent with the biblical text, uh, if you if you make allowance for a little bit of a difference in interpretation from from upbringing, but even then, so much of the experiences are the same. They did a study in India and they found a whole group of Indians who had experienced a, a bearded figure who had a book of judgment, and they, according to their theology, should have been annihilated and merged back with the one. But they had their personal identity, and there was a judge that was judging them, and it, you know so. These experiences are where people literally leave their body uh, and are clinically dead. And they are, a in many cases, documented thoroughly and in the medical records, they are able to see things like what's going on down in the hospital cafeteria or what's, what's up on the roof of the hospital or what's going on two doors down in the neonatal intensive care unit. I mean, they're all a lot of these that they couldn't have known if it were just a physical loss of oxygen to the brain or what have you. There's no way to explain how they could know things that they come to know where they couldn't if they were if they were enclosed in their body and it was a purely naturalistic event. What this indicates is that 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 this isn't uh, death as in the Bible, which is final, but this is uh, a death that is, this isn't a second chance. This is clinical death where the soul does leave the body. And so they are dead, but it's not a final death. This is a, a temporary situation. And uh, they, they, there's a heaven and there's a hell because a lot of these are hellish experiences.